hello everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel me and epiphany i have recently come across this video i did not even know it existed um it's where kirk franklin is doing a freestyle and i want you to take a listen to what he says in this freestyle and then i'm going to break down the meaning of it all right just got back to my sabbatical i'm one of god's kids never thought i'd make it this far but god did whom shall i fear since the most time on me since i've been 150 tried to rob me he can't cause god's got me see i'm god's property jesus is prodigy dope as ever probably always scared character church can make some characters they categorically deny god's character i don't mean to preach just trying to make you think i was a dirty dish now me and god it's Think like Biggie J and Nas, the greatest cake of both. The lion and the lamb, we'll bow down to the goat. Now, I don't want to make no more mistakes with my kid. You heard the mixtape my son put out, Kirk did. So if the cypher don't take away from my sins, which could probably take away from my... Okay, that's enough. I'm just going to stop it right there. So the first things first is, number one, he's rapping in this red room, which red especially when you're thinking about the hip hop awards or BT, um, when these artists are performing on stage, every time they're dressed in red, it's usually has to do with a ritual, um, dedicated to Satan. So I'm just going to start there, but he also starts recognizing Jay-Z, Nas, and Biggie. Jay-Z is the same person who rapped, Jesus can't save you, life starts when the church ends. Jay-Z is the same one who throws up the Baphomet or the devil horns in all his videos. Jay-Z is the same one that told you that he gets possessed by the spirit. I get possessed by, by the spirits. Okay, he and his wife get possessed in order for them to perform or to conjure up music. And this is the person that Kirk Franklin, a supposed gospel singer, wants to dedicate or to reference and honor in his lyrics. The same Biggie who came out with the 666 clothing line before he passed. And Nasty Nas who was drinking his own semen and urine to get put on. I think I'm on strike two. Strike three is him saying that the lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. Let me show you some scripture. Revelations 5, 5. And one of the elders said to me, weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Revelation 17, 14, and these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So if you've been reading your Bible, then you know that the lamb and the lion of the tribe of Judah are both speaking of Jesus Christ. Well, who is this goat that the elites are always worshiping? In Leviticus 16, Aaron was to cast lots upon two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. The goat upon which the Lord's lot fell was to be offered for a sin offering, while the other goat, the scapegoat, which bore the sins of Israel, was sent into the wilderness. Hence the scapegoat, the Hebrew word Azazel, referred to an evil demon inhabiting the wilderness who had to be appeased by sacrifices. In the Apocrypha, specifically the book of Enoch, Azazel is the leader of the rebellious angels. He was the one that supposedly taught the sons of man or the fallen angels to mate with the fair women that they saw, hence where the Nephilim comes from. So he led them in all manners of warfare and witchcraft. Let's take a look at what happened to Jesus when he went to the wilderness. You can find this in Mark 4, 1 through 11. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, 
Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil takes him up into a holy city and sets him on a pinnacle of the temple and says unto him, If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil takes him up into an exceedingly high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And says unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then says Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thy serve. Then the devil leaves him and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So you'll notice that the, especially Hollywood, but you'll notice that these people really do know the word of God. However, they just take it and twist it. Edgar Reese, who's you? It's the brilliant detective who sealed my brutish feet. Remember this, Hobbs? What goes around really goes around. You have a safe trip, yeah? Is on my side. Go ahead! Light up my life! Criminals like Reese, they kill a few people somehow, it ain't their fault. But what took place tonight is the consequences of what I do. You're home early today. What change? Detective John Hobbs wants to uncover the truth. What does Azazel mean? Now, my dictionary says that evil spirit of the wilderness... Walk away, Mr. Hobbs. But nothing in this world... Uh, ...is on my side. ...can help him solve this case. There are angels. Some of these angels were cast down, and a few of the fallen were punished by being deprived of form. Come on, get out of here! And each touch... And at the execution, did he try and touch you? Yeah, he did, actually. ...passes the soul of a killer into someone new. Well, I believe what I see, and I'm still trying to get my mind around what I just saw. Some things, pal. You shouldn't know. I know you, Hobbs. Put the gun down. I know who you are. Put the gun down! Run is on my side. Hey, pal. My work is based upon evidence. And aren't your facts resistant to normal interpretation? Hey, Hobbs. You leave my family alone. I'm still having fun. Denzel Washington. How do we fight him? Is it even possible? I believe it is. John Goodman. Josie, you know I didn't do this. I know it is, Hobbs. Diane Sutherland. I know you know more than you're saying. So they put the truth in plain sight. They just give it a small little twist. So in the Bible, when this scapegoat takes on the sins of Israel and sent into the wilderness, it's to take the sins far away from the children of Israel. The same thing that he did for the man who was cutting himself amongst the tombs and Jesus came and cast the demons out of him and they went into the pigs and the pigs went into the sea and they drowned that same thing. However, Hollywood wants you to believe that your sins are not taken from you when you believe in Jesus and they just hop from one person to the next and there's truly no forgiveness. I believe this is the reason why Jay-Z wants you to know that from his perspective, Jesus can't save you. Life starts when the church ends. It makes more sense when he says those lyrics, but those are just his beliefs. He wants to indoctrinate you into what he believes as a Luciferian. He does not want you to go to the scriptures and read for yourself what thus says the Lord. Another thing they want you to believe is that Satan is more powerful than God. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. He is able to give riches. He is able to put you up on high and give you the worldly things the same way that he offered. Jesus, the kingdom is the same way he can offer the people on this earth his kingdom. He also has the power of death. 
However, 1 Corinthians 10.26 says, For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He created these things. They are still his. Hebrews 2 and 14 shows that through Jesus' death, he had the power to destroy the one who had the power of death, who was the devil. His resurrection proved that. Another thing that I found funny was that every time they got possessed with this evil spirit, Azazel, they kept singing, time is on my side. But it's funny, in Revelation 12, 12, the Lord tells the heavens to rejoice because the devil has come down to earth. And he tells the inhabitants to be careful because he is walking around full of wrath and he knows he has but a short time. So once again, just a little twist. Just like all pagans do, they take the culmination of everything that they believe in and they personify it or they put it into an idol. In this instance, the goat that they worship is none other than Baphomet. The goat-headed demon with wings, I guess to signify that he is a fallen angel. He has breast and a phallus, which is not ironic in today's world. They're trying to tell us that all there is is androgynism. There is transgenderism, that males can be females. When the Lord said that he created us male and female. So it's not a coincidence that this is the idol that they worship. His hands are in the position of as above, so below. There is a satanic pentagram above his head. And often written in the fine print around the pentagram is the word Leviathan. If you don't know who the Leviathan is, we are going to talk about that in a later video. They pray to him for riches and he requires a blood sacrifice for fame and fortune. This is who they personified. This is who they've bowed down to. This is who they're trying to convince you has the power over the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We shall not bow down to their gods. We should not serve them. We should not do any of the works that are required to worship their gods. Jesus will not be bowing down to their gods. Rather, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord.